Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Is it possible to work NVIS from your mobile? Stick around and we'll find out. So I had found an article on the web several years back, probably two or three years ago, and I created something very similar to what the author did with my, uh, I used the little Tar Heel 2. He actually didn't use any uh, screwdriver antenna at all. But he was talking about how to work NVIS uh, from your mobile. Now, as you know, uh, working with a vertical antenna on the mobile, you're going to get lower uh, angles of takeoff and you will be able to work farther stations out. But what if I want to work somebody, say, in the same county as me or at least the same state as me uh, on 40 meters during the daytime? Well, that's going to be pretty difficult with a vertical antenna. So what if we can change the Little Tar Heel 2 and create a NVIS antenna instead? Now, I've done some experimentations with this in the past using voice, and it's proved really to work well. But what I haven't done is I haven't done any uh, sort of testing to it. And that's what I kind of wanted to get into today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Whisper using both antennas. The vertical, and then we're going to remove the vertical and swap over to a piece of wire and see what kind of NVIS properties we get out of it. So let's jump over to the laptop and get everything rolling here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, let's see, we've got uh, FL rig running, so we need to grab WSJTX and get that opened up and running. All right, so now that we have the software running, let's go ahead and swap over to the 40 meter band. And let's go ahead and make sure that radio is set to upper side band as well. All right, so I'm going to enable the TX. Now we just uh, got started into another transmit cycle, so it'll take it a couple of minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and say transmit next. And I am running five watts, and this test is with the vertical antenna, the, the normal antenna that you would run with a little Tar Heel 2. So we'll give it a couple of minutes and see what kind of results we get. All right, so now that we're into the transmit cycle, uh, it's gonna be a couple of minutes before that finishes up, but you can see right here on the clock up in the top right corner that it is 11 a.m. Uh, so 40 is probably starting to shorten up just a little bit, but I wouldn't expect it to be super short this time of morning. So we'll go ahead and let this transmit cycle finish up, and then we'll take a look at the map and see where we were heard. Then we'll swap over to the Invis antenna and give it another try. Okay, so taking a look at the map, and guys, I'm having to do this for my mobile phone. I apologize, but it's the only internet connection I've got right now. Uh, but doing this from the, uh, or, or taking a look at the map, rather, uh, you can see that we're uh, spread out pretty good, uh, omnidirectional. Uh, looks like we're getting connections all the way up into Chicago, and we're getting heard down into South Alabama. So kind of regional, uh, but now what I want to do is I want to swap over to that Invis antenna and see if we can shorten that up even a bit more. It does look like 40 is uh, starting to shorten up more than I thought, but let's see if we can uh, really shorten it up and maybe get some uh, stations that can hear us inside of Tennessee. All right, so what I've done with my main whip for the Tar Heel, and I did this really because uh, it helps me backing into the garage. The antenna won't fit into the garage, so I can get out and pop it off uh, and on pretty quick and easy when I'm ready to go. But I've got this quick disconnect right here, and we're just going to go ahead and pop it off. All right, now that that's off, what I keep in this bag is just a couple of things here. So I've got a tent stake to help me tie it down once I get it deployed. I've got the wire, and on the end of the wire is a ring terminal connected to another quick disconnect. So let's go ahead and get this deployed.
Now, as you can see, this thing's not very far off the ground. Uh, but we're going to hang around for about another 15 minutes to make sure the uh, first transmissions that we sent out clear out of the map. Uh, I think the, the shortest window of time you can look for is the last 10 minutes. So we'll wait about 15 minutes and I'll be back to go ahead and run that second test. Stick around, guys. All right, so uh, I guess about 15 minutes has passed and I double checked the map to make sure nothing was reporting in the last 10 minutes. We've got the Invis antenna set up. So let's go ahead and hit the uh, transmit next here in the software. And let's give that a couple of minutes to uh, transmit out and see where we're decoded this time. And then we'll uh, kind of compare the results and wrap this thing up. All right, so there's the results from the Invis antenna. Uh, it's actually kind of surprising a little bit. I would have thought that the whip would have gotten out a little bit further, and I thought Invis would have shortened up quite a bit more. Uh, you know, maybe it's uh, no receiving stations in Tennessee. Um, I, I'm honestly not sure. Of course, we're running a compromised antenna pretty much any time you're dealing with uh, something hooked up on your car. But uh, a little shocking for the results. But nonetheless, kind of a cool test this morning. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's my attempt at Invis from the mobile. Although the results today didn't show it, I do know that it improves communications inside the state of Tennessee when I've run this with the testing that I've done in the past with my brother-in-law. We tried uh, contacting him one day with the whip, and I guess he's 40 miles, maybe 50 miles south of me. Uh, he couldn't even hear me at all. As soon as I went to the Invis antenna, uh, he got me at about an S5, so I know it works even though the uh, results today really didn't indicate that. But go out and experiment. See what you can come up with. You don't have to have a screwdriver antenna. Just like the guy in the webpage that I referenced at the beginning of the video, he just put a simple stud on the bed of his truck. Alright guys, we will see you on the next video. Give us a thumbs up if you like this one, and don't forget to click the subscribe button before you head out. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3. And I am not transmitting. Why? Oh, maybe I am transmitting. Eh, let's wait for the airplane to pass. I think that airplane's flying circles overhead. And another airplane. Let's see if he's going to fly in circles too above us. He is literally flying in a circle. Unbelievable.